Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Gotanium Show. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. Glad to have you along for the ride today. And we've got a special treat for you. You've been asking for some improvements in the Comply module, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What are those improvements, and how do I get ready to implement those in my environment? And I have along with us today the SME lead for Comply, Lucas. Introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Lucas Lyon. I've been with Tanium for about five years and I'm currently the lead SME for a comply product uh, globally. So Lucas, uh, yeah, we've gotten to work together for several years now and we've gotten to catch up at Converge and meet with customers and been on calls together, spent a lot of fun working on comply. And it was a fantastic product already, but we've got a lot of new things coming down the pipe that our users have asked for. But before we do that, some people may not know the comply story. Could you tell us where did comply come from? Absolutely. So comply at a very high level, came about because we had customers that were using Tanium for speed and scale, and they wanted the ability to do compliance or like system configuration compliance, as well as vulnerability scanning. And they came to us and they asked us to make Tanium do that. And so that's how Comply came about. So what Comply does is that at a very high level, it allows customers to utilize open source vulnerability management, vulnerability definitions, things like CIS benchmarks, DISA STIGs, and go out and conduct compliance and vulnerability scanning across all their endpoints. Now, earlier you were telling me a story, maybe you could share that with our audience here about some early customer story with how long it took them to scan before and after Tanium. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we had one customer um, and they were talking about, you know, their whole remediation cycle would maybe take uh, two weeks to a month, right? Because when they scanned their environment, they had to schedule a scan for this region, schedule a scan for this region, schedule a scan for this region. And they didn't have to go and spend a lot of time actually validating, did the scans actually happen on these endpoints? That's one of the things that Comply effectively eliminates because today we can do scans across 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 endpoints and more and have those scans be done in a matter of minutes versus days or weeks. Man, that's the Tanium story all up. So we've got a number of steps we're taking to get to Comply 3.0. Right now in production, we have release 2.9. Could you tell us what are we going to get in the current release of 2.9 and what are the prerequisites there? So Comply 2.9 is kind of the first phased step towards what we're calling Comply 3. And Comply 2.9 changes are really about addressing you know, data consistency and, and making comply, be able to get data faster. And the way that we do that is we leverage what's called Tanium data service, right? And so in the past, comply would go out and we would issue Tanium questions and we would gather that data and that data would be used to populate a report. And that's fine and it worked, but when we scale up and you know, when we look at how can we get faster, how can we make data more consistent? What we found is that if we use something like Tanium data service, which goes out and via something called continuous harvesting, grabs data from the endpoints constantly, right? Like every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. And then when the module needs to display that data, we don't have to go out to the endpoints. We just go straight to Tanium data service and we can populate all of the reports with the latest, you know, the latest data from the endpoints. And that's a huge change. And it's our first step, you know, moving towards what we call comply three. That is a huge change. And as we know with Tanium 7.4 and all the new innovations we put into there in the platform itself, and particularly the Interact module is how you get that Tanium data service. So one thing we want you to be aware of today is that as you're getting ready to put Comply 2.9 in your environment, you want to have a conversation with your account team because there are some additional specifications for the module server specifically because we are uh, going to be hitting it a little harder now with the Tanium data service, which is going out there and collecting this data. It does it gracefully from the endpoints. Again, that's, that's our whole thing is about minimizing impact to the endpoints. But what we're doing is uh, that real-time ongoing data collection and just caching a little bit of it so that when you go load those complied reports, they don't take, you know, don't sit there and spin for a few seconds, right? So now it just comes right up. And particularly in a global environment where you've got machines that aren't always online all the time, now you're going to have all that data right there. So make sure you go read the release notes at KB dot tanium.com you should be doing that for any module that you upgrade right but pay attention to those because comply 2.9 is going to require interact 2.6 
And Interact 2.6 is what has this new improvement to the Tanium data service in the background for that cache. It's going to put a little more load on your module server. So whether you're running a Windows module server or an OVA, a virtual appliance or an appliance, you just want to double check those specs before you go straight into Interact 2.6 and comply 2.9. So as uh, we've talked about this, uh, getting ready for the call, Lucas, you said that this is all getting ready for Comply 2.10. So what's coming in that release? Yeah, so, and we're going to show you here in a second, but Comply 2.10 is, you know, what we internally call kind of phase two of Comply 3 readiness, right? And what we primarily do in Comply 2.10 is we, you know, we split apart the scanning activity from what we would call the findings and the reporting, right? Traditionally in Comply, these have been kind of a single object, right? And, and our customer feedback and, and really everything we've learned has pointed to, you know, we want to separate the scanning activity from the ability for customers to explore and interact with their data. And so as we'll show you here in a minute, Comply 210 is all about getting you access to your data, you know, making it possible to look at a single endpoint, to look at, you know, a specific region, however you want to slice and dice the view of your vulnerability and compliance data, we make that a possibility. Fantastic. Why don't you go ahead and uh, show us what that looks like in your lab there? Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to confirm that we can see the screen here. I think so. Yep. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is Comply 210. <clears throat> and Comply 210 Again, what we really change initially here, you know, is we've separated what we call assessments from, you know, from the, the report or the findings. And right, so you still have your traditional scans, which we now call assessments. And one of the important things about Comply 210 is when you upgrade to Comply 210, we're, we're not going to break or change any of what you're doing today, right? We're going to make sure that all of your existing you know, saved questions, all of your existing connections, anything you have set up to get vulnerability and compliance data out to a data warehouse or anything like that, we're not going to change how that functions, right? So you'll still see an assessment hash. You'll still have the ability to export data from this page to the traditional comply reports. And so all of that, you know, it changes, but it doesn't break any of your existing stuff. And the reason that we separate this out is because now we can go and look at something called findings. And findings now is a view that allows us to essentially sort and filter all of our compliance and vulnerability data, however we see fit. And right here, we're seeing some compliance data and the kind of the default view here is to show everything. We're gonna look at the vulnerability findings for now because I, I think they're far more interesting from a slice and dice perspective, right? So we start off in a view that's essentially, you know, we can go to all findings. And this shows us essentially everything across our entire environment, right? So we have 23,000 unique findings and it breaks it down kind of initially by, you know, informational, low, um, different severities, right? And, and the power here and what our customers have been asking for is, for example, you know, if I want to look at only vulnerabilities from the current year, right? And let's say I, I'm really interested right now in vulnerabilities that um, are between this certain scan, you know, this certain severity. And so just like that, I'm now looking at, you know, what are the findings that are only from this year that are, you know, by a specific range. I could then go and sort by computer group and look at, for example, a specific business unit or a specific region or, you know, any, any way that you have your environment broken down so that you can look at, you know, things like BU, things like region, things like individual users, things like you know, uh, does the server have an Oracle database, right? However you want to break down and look at this data, you can do that. What's really interesting is we've kept our existing patch integration. So for vulnerability findings, if you go in and you look at the data for one of these, right? If there's a, an existing patch, we will show that down in the, you know, patch definition area. So you'll see, for example, if there's a patch for this, I can pivot over to Tanium patch. Something new that we've added is the asset integration. So if you have Tanium Asset, we can now show you, you know, at a glance, everything about this endpoint that I that you may need to know. And again, this is about presenting this data in such a way that you know our compute our customers, if they need to, can even go, for example, and, and look at this data for an individual endpoint, right? So I can go and look at this, you know, and I can say, I just need a quick report for an individual endpoint. 
And now I have that, right? So I've done all this filtering. And then the way this works is I can then save that as a report, right? So if I were to click save as here and end up with one of these reports, a report now in comply to 10 and, and ongoing is really just a collection of this data, right? So I have Windows Workstation vulnerabilities here. And something that's also new that we haven't been able to do in the past is we can now, you know, let's say I create this report, but then I need to make a change, right? Maybe I really didn't want to include one of these years. You'll note that it changes here and I can now save this as a new report. I can save this, uh, the existing report, or if I, you know, if I made a mistake, I can actually just revert this, right? And so this is the really big change. There's one more change that I want to talk about. It's actually in comply 2.9 now. And that change is, you know, an additional way to prevent impact for extremely resource constrained machines. For example, you know, VDI systems and, you know, very low resource machines like uh, medical equipment, ATM, stuff like that. And, and, and I'll show that to you briefly. So in historically, um, we've had default settings with comply where we only ever used a single CPU and 768 megs of RAM. And that has effectively across 99% of machines eliminated any impact whatsoever. So that means you can run a vulnerability scan. Someone can be on their workstation working on their email or what have you, and they don't even know a scan's occurring. However, what we've recently added is what we call low resource mode. And that actually allows you to define a specific percentage of a single CPU and to go down as low as 256 megs of RAM. And again, this isn't for all computers. This is really intended for extremely resource constrained machines, appliances, things like that. You know, th anything that supports the Tanium client today can use this capability. And so those are just a couple of the, you know, the primary takeaways that we're introducing with the Comply 210 preview release, right? The ability to interact and explore all of your data. Wow, I mean, <laughs> Every, you know, every IT administrator is, especially if you're in the workspace and user computing side, you're always worried about impact to the endpoint. So not only are we able to reduce that even further, now we have this amazing level of flexibility in the data. I mean, this is just phenomenal. It really is a night and day difference yeah, from absolutely. what we had before. Wow. Yep. So I'll stop there and, you know, we can talk about this some more. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about it. You know, we're this is already out. We have several customers doing what we call a preview. So, um, you know, at least I'd say 35, 40 of our customers are out there previewing this release now. It's available to, you know, other existing customers. So if you're interested, you can talk to your account team. We can, you know, maybe get you in there and you can get that in your lab and, and kind of start plugging away and providing us feedback. That's what we're interested in right now is feedback to make the product even better. Fantastic. And speaking of feedback, there's more customer feedback being implemented right now. Tell us about what's coming after 2.10. Absolutely. So what we're doing right now is called, we're calling the 2.10 preview release. And what we're, the reason we're doing this is because we want, you know, a large handful of our customers to get into 2.10 right now and start delivering feedback. Like what works, what doesn't work? What else do we need to change? You know, what tweaks do we need to make? And then we're planning on going GA, you know, we're targeting um, late May, early June for the Comply 210 GA release. The thing that we're gonna be adding between now and then is a completely new export capability, right? One of the things that our customers have been most interested in is how do I take all this data once I've tuned it and, and kind of curated it, how do I get it out to Splunk? How do I get it out to a data warehouse and, and start leveraging that technology with all my other you know, security platform information to make decisions, right? And so the thing that we'll be adding for GA is a brand new, completely rebuilt from the ground up, um, you know, export capability. And that'll be to export to a file. There'll be a push button so that you can generate a new connection and, you know, schedule that data export. And so that's the big thing between now and GA. And then beyond that, we're looking at remote scanning, right? We're looking at um, client extensions. So we want to improve the scheduling on the endpoint, have things like blackout windows, have the ability to, you know, kind of automatically follow the sun and scan according to the, the endpoints, local time zone, things like that. It gives us greater control over the data on the endpoint. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, that's really what Tanium does. That's always been our messaging. We listen to our customers, just like we listen to the need for this compliance scanning ability in real time. You know, over and over, customers have told us that I've heard customers tell me that 
the when we're scanning with our other tools, we would have to tell the network team, hey, we need the network this week. <laughs> so yeah. they would just crush the network for a week. But Tanium doesn't do that when they do the scans. And so now we're just continuing to iterate on that customer feedback cycle. So I've got a, a quick summary here. Lucas, thank you for uh, showing us what's coming. So just a recap for you. So right now, 2.9 is already there. Remember, just be careful to uh, review those, the, the kb.team.com on the release notes for Interact 2.6 and your module server. So this is going to give you that faster reporting using TDS, the better offline, offline machine reporting, all of that. And then 2.10 is coming uh, right on the heels of that very soon here with your findings, assessments, and reports. And then we've got the improved export, which is phenomenal. That's something that I've heard from customers a lot is I want to have a more flexible way to get this data out. And that is coming soon. And then in 3.0, we've got these remote authenticated scans, another big ask that people have had for a long time. So that's all coming very soon here from Tanium Comply. So finally, this show is all about preparing for these things. So there's a couple things you need to keep in mind before you go and just install Comply 2.9 in your environment today in prod. We want to make sure that uh, if you're working with your account team, they can guide you through this or you can read the release notes. Make sure that your module server has the new improved specs because we did increase those specs recently. So you want to check those out at the docs site, docs.tanium.com. And then you also want to, uh, then you're clear to proceed with the Interact 2.6 upgrade, Comply 2.9 upgrade, and then just keep your eye out for 2.10. And while we're waiting on 2.10 to get finalized, there's a couple options you have. You can contact Lucas's team and ask them to come do a little roadshow with you to kind of walk through those features in more detail. And also to get a, a, a roadmap presentation to see in a little more detail for our existing customers of what exactly is coming down the road and when to expect that. So that's all uh, there. You can you can join that preview also, like Lee, Lucas said, just talk to your account team. We are always looking for customers to help us test what's coming next beyond our own testing. And finally, you knew you were going to get a community Tanium link here. So our Bitly link today takes you to the Tanium Comply Central. Every one of our modules on the community site has a central page which has a fantastic overview of the module, list of use cases, and current forum discussion topics, and sometimes even links out to our Tanium YouTube channel here where we have more training. Special thanks to our guest, Lucas Lyon, today, the global SME lead for Comply. I'm glad you got to meet him today. And Lucas, thank you for this tour of what's coming next in Comply. Now, with all of that, you are ready for Comply 3. And we will circle back later when Comply 3 drops and do a big show when that release is ready. But we wanted you to have this information before then because we want you to know we are working for you. We hear your feedback and it just keeps getting better. So until then, go Tanium.